Hey, I'm Ben. I'm Ryan. We're Captain Cuts, and we're hanging out with Rob from Front Row Live. Woo! You guys recently dropped the debut single, uh, Love Like We Used To. Uh, when your publicist sent it over, I was telling him, I was like kind of stuck on it. I kind of had to put it on repeat. And sounds like it's doing good. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the track and what really inspired this as your first single. Um, well, this was a song that we did with this guy, Nate Seifert, who's probably our favorite song, one of our favorite songwriters to work with. And he, uh, he's Nature, is his artist name. And it was just a day we were in here, and I think we had, we had some sort of cool sounding loop that like a, sort of an ambient loop that we had going and just added chords and a snap and wrote the entire song over like this short loop and uh and then we brought it into epic to be like you know do you have any artists that this could work for and they were like you're the artist <laughs> so that's how it happened that's kind of cool you guys weren't expecting to get signed uh, yeah. I, no no it went from being a normal meeting to 30 minutes later being artists it was, it was the craziest day I can remember in my entire life, I would say. Was that actually something you guys had in mind to eventually be an artist? Definitely. But I think because I think we'd always talked about putting out our own music, but because of the fact that as writers and producers, we are really busy and we're getting work and have been doing a lot of things that, that we're very excited about. I think that without something this crazy happening, we wouldn't have made the push to, to do it. So it was a blessing in disguise. We just, we weren't ready. We weren't ready, but when, I don't think we ever would have been ready. Right. So yeah. it, it was kind of perfect the way it worked out. So when you guys actually did this track and, and brought it to Epic uh, for another artist, after they told you they wanted you guys to release it, yeah. did you guys go back and change anything or well, yeah, is it still the same? When we pitched it, it was a full demo. It was, it was just one keyboard sound and some snaps the whole way through. Yeah. So we then took it back to the studio and probably spent three weeks kind of trying 10 different productions on it to see what we would want our music to sound like. Um, and we finally landed on what yeah. it sounds like. Cool. There's literally 10 different versions of that song on this computer. Yeah. Completely different. And I think we and land. we're going to play them all right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How different is it being the artist now, though? Like, because I'm assuming now you're you're paying more attention to what you're releasing. So, I mean, but how different is it for you guys? I mean, it's super fun. Uh, I think, you know, we, we've been working with artists for so long, yeah. so we, we kind of know what the world is like, but experiencing it firsthand, there's a lot more of your, there's a lot more to put out creatively, you know, not just with music, but you know, videos and photos and artwork and all of these things that, right. you know, are different ways for you to, creatively have output so it's it's a lot of fun to be able to put our hands into all that stuff not to mention getting a live show ready to go and you know kind of planning out all of that stuff we don't want to do anything half-assed so we've been given this crazy opportunity so we're like yeah. really hunkering down now making sure the music is great the videos are great the photos are great the everything works out yeah. right i mean 90 percent of our lives have not changed because that's just yeah. songwriting that's and producing yeah. <clears throat> but then there's the 10 percent, which is like the random day where we have to wear gold chains and take photos <laughs> and figure out what our video is gonna be. Now you guys have to sing uh, instead of having another artist do it. So how do, how do you guys figure out who's gonna do what? Well, we're I mean, not singing yeah, actually. Sing. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it, we write songs, but unfortunately, unfortunately my voice just does, <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't cut it. This so is where nature comes in. This is where nature comes in because nature is an incredible songwriter and an incredible singer. And you know, he, he'll get on our mic, like we'll just lay down some chords and he'll get on our mic and just like, spit out some of the best melodies it just and and it's like and then we just get to be like that was awesome and then like we we all edit it together right. and and so that's how a lot of that process works sometimes so it's it's this is another way for us to work with vocalists and writers that we love and then and then really get to shape the song in a way that we would want to express it right. which is you know instead of being like how would this other artist want the song to sound we get to now say this is what we want this song to sound right. like which is the most fun. Now are you guys jumping into like a debut EP, like a debut album, or you guys are just gonna push this song while you guys are trying to figure everything else well, out? Yeah, I mean, we're writing every day for, for us. I, I don't know if there's gonna be an EP. I think the cool thing about this, the idea of putting out singles for us is that we get to write as many songs as we can until we find one song that we think is is amazing. Like, I, I don't, I would not wanna put out, I feel like when you put out an EP or an album, you write three songs that you think are amazing and then eight songs that you think are, they're, they're good. They're good enough. And like, we don't, want to do that. we don't see any reason to spend time on those songs. Like I, I, I am happy to write a hundred songs halfway. And if we don't like them, we stop and we move to the next one until we feel that there's something magic 
about it. Right. You know, like when, when we wrote Love Like We Used To, I, it, there was a moment, and I, and I remember where Ryan and I looked at each other and we were like, whoa, that that was that feels really good yeah. and and that that's the and that happens rarely it's a rare thing you, you know you write a million songs to find that one moment but we we're lucky enough to be able to just get go here every day and try for that right. so does this is this going to change like the work that you do for other artists as well or not really i mean hopefully we'll be able to collaborate on the artist side with some of these people we've already worked with mm -hmm. um and people were huge fans of, but I don't think it's going to change our day-to-day -day lives. Like, li love, love Like We Used To was written not for us as artists, so yeah. it's like now this weird thing where we're going into sessions being like, is this for us, is this, which we've never done before, so, um, so that it changes the perspective at the beginning of a writing session, I think, right. but we're just trying to write great songs, and then we'll hopefully produce it in our kind of retro future lane, and yeah. like our sound. And we also have a bunch of stuff that we had done previously that's about to come out for other artists as well. So that's still kind of like a, a thing that's happening for us at the same time. So it's kind of, it's actually really exciting to see like our songs coming out and on the same, on the same day songs for other artists that we wrote and produced coming out as well. Do you feel this is really going to pop the name out a lot more? I mean, hopefully, hopefully but I, it's, it's yes, that would be great. But also like the whole experience in my mind is just, all one huge adventure so like whatever happens we've already we've already had like an insane time right. doing this so it's kind of just like we're already up and let's just see what happens after that aside from working with other artists you guys have been doing uh emo night that's where you guys have been there since the beginning with emo night right almost the beginning yeah, like um, the fourth emo night no, no, the third one i know the it was third the one we went oh the I third we dj'd the fourth one yeah yeah exactly we went i mean we grew up like loving uh, the pop punk emo scene right. um and uh and we that's the best scene by the way it's still it's, it's still going strong yeah no for yeah. sure and 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 it's i mean it's been the craziest resurgence this in the last you know two years with this whole thing but uh we went and that night uh mark hoppus dj'd and uh and like we were we went thinking like it was going to be some like weird lame event and it was like a thousand kids all like moshing and dancing to classic songs that we all grew up loving classic and emo songs classic <laughs> emo songs yeah <laughs> they weren't playing timeless well, there wasn't Frank Sinatra or anything <laughs> um and we were just like blown away by it uh so we we got in touch with the guys who started it and we were like we we, we need to get involved yeah. um and then uh but also we a lot of the people who kind of headline the DJ sets there and and DJ a lot there are people who were in these big pop punk and emo bands right. and I think for us it was like we want a DJ but we're not any sort of name in this scene, so it doesn't make sense for us. We were just fans. So we figured we had to do something different, which is why we started doing the, the remixes and the mashups and the edits, the DJ edits of all these old songs. We found, you know, we scoured the, <coughs> the depths of the internet to find these acapellas, literally like on these crazy forms where you have to like pay a $9 fee to like even search in some form. Damn. And uh, <laughs> we ended up, yeah, I know. <laughs> and we made like, I think we made like, we made like eight remixes and then we were like, we kind of looked at each other and we were like, what are we doing? Like, we what are, got to the we point where we were spending more time it. on the mixtape than we were on like any other actual thing that would pay us any money or yeah. do anything. <laughs> it was a passion thing. We just, we loved this music and it was super exciting to hear these songs on top of new like pop, top 40 and dance music. Like right. it was weird how well they work together. Yeah, it was kind of proving that the songs still are hits yeah. and could be, if they were produced a different oh, yeah. way, they could be on the radio today. Well, I mean, I always I always say this, like I love how a lot of like the pop punk artists or like the warp Tour artists are actually behind the scenes of a lot of these pop yeah, artists today. So now. it's like they're- Martin Johnson's an amazing songwriter. Oh my God, yes. We're a huge fans of him. Yeah, and definitely. We, yeah, we wrote a song with him that we're really excited about. Dude. Yeah. John Feldman, one of the biggest pop producers out there. He was right. the singer of Goldfinger. Yeah, yeah, it's, and yeah, it's crazy. Tim and Matt, Sugar Cold. Sugar Cold. Yeah. I think Tim, Tim is like barely getting noticed nowadays as like a writer. I think more people are starting to realize yeah. that it's Tim. Well, he he produced Shut Up and Dance that we wrote. So That's we've right. worked together on something that worked out really well. Yeah. So yeah, he's amazingly talented. Is there any like producer, like specific producer, you guys are usually excited about uh, that you either might have already worked with or you want to work with i mean max martin is the king obviously <laughs> it's like everything he puts out you're just like wow how did he think of it how did he think of that um so yeah i think i think we're obsessed over that you know we try to find 
every little pe we've we've worked with a lot of people who have worked with him and he's always like one degree of separation away <laughs> but he uh we'll get there one day. yeah one day um but yeah so i think he's kind of the idol at the top for everybody who's right. trying to write songs because it's like nobody since the beatles has had as much success as he had, he's had in the <laughs> pop songwriting world seriously with like with hits it's insane that's crazy to put it that way though like I, i'm always I'm, for me like the top producer for me is always my go-to is uh john fellman yeah. like i feel like he's the one that like everybody wants to work with. i mean good charlotte is here because of him exactly. type of thing but yeah you're right max martin is uh is another one that's like really out like there 57 top 10 songs i think in the Billboard Hot 100, which is insane. With the artists that I performed on Emo Night, um, is there any specific ones that you guys like are super excited about? Like, what what is the artist that really made you guys like wanna like listen to music? Well, I mean, you know, I think the things we weren't like just influenced by the pop punk emo scene, but I mean, from Emo Night, I mean, when Dashboard played, when Saves the Day played, there were, there are those kind of like just like staples in that whole thing when they and they came out and played some songs and it was just like one of those weird like if my 15 year old self could see me yeah, yeah. now kind of situation and there's um, moments sometimes where we get paired up in a writing session with somebody who was in one of these big pop punk bands or emo bands and like yeah. the good charlotte guys yeah, and and simple plan guys and nice. it's like and we wrote we with andrew mcmahon andrew mcmahon <sighs> yeah it was, it was crazy when when he went and he we were just sitting in here and he just went over to our piano and just started like playing something as an idea and like a part of me just like like a real woke where i was like oh my god year old yeah it's like freaking out yeah. yeah so that was that was cool uh, how, how do these experiences like help you out like for the stuff that you guys are doing as well i mean our entire job is the most fun thing in the entire world we get to just come here and write songs with people and so when when somebody comes in that we grew up idolizing it it only makes it more like it only further like confirms to us that we're doing the right thing <laughs> like there's no you know because also it, it is so fun but it's a grind in here you know yeah. there are a lot of days where we don't write anything that we like or whether where things just don't go right and so you have to be resilient and days like that where you get to work with people that you respect and love and all that uh, make it super worth it. Uh, is there anything else you guys are up to as far as uh the single are you guys working on a music video uh it's dropping later this year right uh yeah i mean i think we're gonna be hopefully shooting it in the next week or two or a couple weeks uh our director's on board and we've got a concept all ironed out he's just working out the the details and um but we're really excited about it and uh it's like this concept is 10 times as expensive as your budget and we were like well can we do it and he's like yeah, we could do it. <laughs> so we're gonna, we'll see how it turns yeah, out. We're gonna figure out how to make it work. <laughs> figure out how to make it work. We're gonna we're gonna end up being PAs on our own music I know, video. Exactly. I think. Seriously. We're gonna do everything on it. No, I mean, we'll, we'll, I told him I was like, we're gonna come up. We're gonna. I think we're gonna shoot in Seattle, and we we're like, we're gonna there come up are. there, and we're gonna help you however we can. <laughs> if you need me to like load things onto a truck, I'm there for it. Yeah, so that's we're we're all in here. That's badass. And lastly, what what's so different about you guys from any other artists out there? Since you guys are a fresh new artist. I mean, you got this. <laughs> <sighs> um, I don't know. I think I think maybe because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I think maybe because we're just here to write songs and then kind of we're going to write as many songs as we can. And maybe we'll be like, there's that one. And like, we'll put that out in two months. And like, because we, uh, we know it's kind of a numbers game. You know, it's one out of 20 choruses that you write are actually yeah. good. So I think maybe the fact that we have incredibly high standards for our songwriting and production stuff because it's such a competitive world that maybe that will help us going forward in picking our own songs out of that bunch yeah so and also i mean back to we have no idea what we're doing but it, it but it's it's the, i think the the whole idea about us i think that we want to portray as artists is that we don't have any idea what we're doing but we're going to have fun no matter what and we don't want to. Yeah. We don't, we're gonna have we're gonna have a great time. No, we just we don't we don't want to take it too seriously because this whole thing is so fun and and we just want the music to speak for itself. I think. Um, and and you know we don't want to be like brooding behind some like you know dark cape or something like that. We we you know we write music and we and we want to you know continue to do that and play and play live and and do all of that stuff. So I think cool. that that might yeah. be what our thing is.